more grateful when you become. It's like this endless, um, endless upward spiral of, of goodness. And, uh, that's ultimately how we should be living our lives. Of course, we're not there most of the time. But sometimes we get to taste this, we get to experience it. Father says, right, this is why when the time comes for me to pass on, I will leave words of gratitude to the world and return to the Father with only love. When that time comes, the only thing that will matter to me is how much I can revere God and live in gratitude. This is my dream. Father saying ultimately everything that he went through, all the difficulties, hardships, persecution in his life, but ultimately at the end is to be able to look back and to feel gratitude. And that's a key point to making a good offering. And our life is made up of little time periods, and each day is a time period, and fundraising each one is a time period. They offer up this one, they offer up few months becomes a day, you offer up a week, you offer up a 21 day condition, and you eventually offer up bigger things, you offer up a year of GPA, you offer up a year. And each one of these opportunities to offer up a time period leads to ultimately we offer up our lives. And we don't know how it comes, right? Quickly or, or like we have time to think about it, but we don't know how it comes. Ultimately, we want to be able to offer up our lives with a heart of gratitude. And then one more father's words. The extent to which you are able to be grateful reflects your capacity to live in heaven. Wow. Like when I read that, it was on the Karen's team, like at the end of the, the day where it results. I read that quote, I was like, wow. The extent to which you are able to be grateful reflects your capacity to live in heaven. Because we always heard all oh, our capacity to love is what determines our kind of our level of spirituality we can go to. But here Father says, right, the extent to which you can be grateful. So yeah, once again it's really showing me that love and gratitude are Deeply, deeply inter interconnected. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> and yeah, those are my kind of, that's my, my takeaway from this competition um, about gratitude and how important gratitude is. And yeah, I could really feel at times, times you know, sometimes for hours and hours, it's just really difficult, all kind of things hit you. But then I would really try to dwell on gratitude. And, Breathe in and breathe out and try to feel gratitude, and then all of a sudden, just this rush of feeling of grace and peace, and oh, everything's going to be okay. Would like, would like come to me? And um, yeah, people grow so fast spiritually in this GP environment. And that's something that, that hit me a few days ago is I noticed how actually. It hasn't always been like this, but maybe in the last three, four, five years, there is so much expression of gratitude. It's not something that we staff started or initiated, it's coming from you. There's so much expression of gratitude, like at the end of every run, when you guys come back, and maybe you don't always mean it, right? It's not always sincere sometimes, <laughs> but it's Thank you, God. Thank you, two parents. Thank you, squirrels. Thank you, my ancestors. Thank you to uh, my van family. Thank you to the people that I met. Like, thank you to my my family, my pets. Like, da 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 da. da. <laughs> as long as you know, we're like you know, like we staff, we might listen to this and think, oh, it's, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit childish, right? Or it's a bit repetitive. But even if you don't always mean it, the fact that you're saying it, the fact that you're having give and take with gratitude, 
is a beautiful thing. And that's, I, I, I can really see God is able to pour down so much love. And that's, that's an aspect of Shojo. Two mothers have been talking about Shojo in these last few years, and then somehow he has so much gratitude in GPA and from GPA members. And um, if you think about it simply as a parent, if a child is grateful and expresses gratitude, as a parent, you want to do more and more for that child. You don't, if a child, a parent will always do for, for their parents, for, for their children, what is needed. But if a child is, that never expresses gratitude, and parents are, are doing, doing all kinds of things, like to provide for the kids, and driving them here, and driving them there. Uh, four kids, it's like crazy sometimes. My wife and me think, okay, this one needs to be a gymnastics at that time. This one needs to be picked up from the soccer field. And how are we going to do this? <laughs> it's like, ah. And then, if your children express gratitude, as a parent, it's like, oh, no problem. I'm like happy to do this. You don't feel burdened by it at all. But if children don't express gratitude,
for me, going through that, I felt how after tasting this, this level of intensity of living for the sake of others, how could we just go back to normal condition, like regular condition? And actually we didn't. I think after that we did another competition, and sometimes back to back. We do 40 days, three day workshop, then another 40 days, one time we did 80 day competition, a 90 day competition. <laughs> You guys see it's 21 days, it's long. <laughs> but um, for me, what I really felt in my heart throughout those competitions is this is an incredible gift. Like this is this is a time, an environment where I can live totally for the sake of others, where I can I can be pushed beyond what I would do just by myself or by, by my own power or initiative. I wouldn't do so much, but because, because of this environment of competition, I can be pushed to a totally new level and I can experience even a little bit. I can get a taste of true parents lifestyle. And that is the most precious thing that I can gain throughout this competition. That, that, that for me was a big takeaway from, from the competition. It was, wow, I've lived even a little bit. I mean, you go through crazy things in competition, right? You, you wake up super early, you do morning blitzes, you do late night blitzes, you're like pushing, being pushy, you, you hardly have time to eat, to go to the bathroom, you just sleep sometimes, like just a few hours, you wake up tired, but still you need to go out, and even when you're not inspired, you need to go out, and you need to push yourself. It's amazing, it's really amazing. And this is, and this is a little bit of Trinkham's lifestyle. There was a few quotes, like, like who knows this one well, but my father says, that's the path I walked from 1953 to 1960. There were seven sleepless years. I intensely loved people, forgetting all eating. I talked all day, so intensely, that I thought evening was morning. There was no concept of day or night in my mind. Sounds like competition, right? Unless you don't know anymore, like this morning bliss, late night bliss, or like, oh, what time, what time is it? Where are we? Where am I? I only knew the energy of love and of giving. So the entire square world came down and assisted me. That is real power, and you can live that way. It's about your father, and then... It's your mother talking about your father. Your father has no private life. He lives like he has forgotten about it. However, when it comes to humankind, he treasures every last person in his heart and believes that he has to raise them up to stand before God. He is pouring out his heart and soul to save people so that they can be reborn as filial sons and daughters. He is always thinking about you members and your personal lives. There is not a day that he does not worry and think about you. I always feel sorry to true father. Even if father goes to bed late, he rises early in the morning and prays seriously. Even if the wind is blowing or if it is raining night and day, He's praying and working for you, the children of the Unification Church. When I see the face of Father meditating deeply on how to fulfill God's will, I think he is someone whom God cannot help but love. So for me, that actually that lifestyle is way more.
more precious than having a God experience here or there. God experiences are good when they come to you, but we can't control them. And some people have many, and some people don't have. Some, some of you here, right? Uh, Sugu or Connor, you yeah. kind of friends just back there. Like, these guys always have amazing, amazing things happen to them, <laughs> amazing experiences, and they come and they give testimonies at workshops, and I'm like, wow, that didn't happen to me. <laughs> I think I'm too good. More God experiences in these two and a half years than in my life. In my life. <laughs> But I'm totally fine with that, actually. Um, having God experiences doesn't determine, you know, anything really about you. And actually, many people, many people have had God experiences. They've come up here and they've shared incredible testimonies over the years of STF and GPA, and they cried tears up here, right? And then, like two years later, three years later, like these people are gone, and they, they, they look back and they even start to doubt their experiences. So for me, I've never, I've never pursued that. I've never really like treasured these quote meeting and God, meeting with God experiences. If they come, it's good. It gives you some kind of boost, but it's not the end goal. Uh, I'm telling you, don't feel disappointed if you didn't have the amazing God experience doing this winter competition. Because ultimately, I mean, the, the ultimate example of that is John the Baptist, who had.